I thought I would start with this question. How many of you would like to see something dangerous? Everybody gets excited about the possibility of me getting hurt. Okay. Uh, Aren't you glad you got the front row? Yeah. All right, we're going to have a little countdown here. So count down with me. Three, two, one. Congratulations, you just learned your first two lessons this morning. Here's the first lesson. You assumed that the words that were coming from this platform were about someone else and for someone else. You assumed that the danger was going to be for me, for your entertainment. But the message, the lesson is this. Every word, every song, every note that comes from this platform, listen, it's for you. It's not for someone else. It's not about someone else. And if you will come here every Sunday with the mentality, the mindset that every word, every song, every testimony that comes from this platform, hey, this is for me, I guarantee you it will change your Sunday morning. Second lesson is this. When I was about to toss these out there, there were people ready to duck for cover. And here's the second thing you just learned. You do, you do not want to miss what comes from this platform every Sunday. See, God wants to do something in your life each time you guys come here. And uh, I thought I would do this. I thought I would go ahead and juggle these knives for you. But I really hope you appreciate Fred. My friend Fred, I've known for 30 years. I hope you appreciate your pastor. And so what I'd like to do... Um, in, in honor of Fred, I would like to do my juggling impression of Fred Staten, your pastor. But to make this trick even more exciting today, we're going to do this entire trick while wearing this very decorative headband. <clears throat> I'm not crazy. My mom tested me. All right, here we go. Repeat after me. Roses are red. Violets are blue. These things are dangerous. And they can kill you. There we go. My juggling machetes. Hey guys, uh, that was my tribute to your pastor, Fred. That was just like his sermons. Three points in a poem, just like his sermons. I know, that's really bad. Hey, guys, you don't want to miss these. As a juggler, I've missed them. I've caught the wrong end. I've dropped one through my shoe. I've done all kinds of not good things with these. You do not want to miss these. And the same thing is true every Sunday you come here. There are words that are come from this platform that are for you. And I just want to encourage you, don't miss it. Don't miss the good things that God has for you each Sunday. Would you guys do this for me? Would you sit up nice and straight? I do this at camp all the time, and this is uh, how I like to start my talks. Sit up nice and straight, and would you guys just, as a symbol of saying, God, I'm ready to receive from you, would you just put your hands up like this? Just put your hands up like this, and as I pray, would you just join me? Father, thank you for the time that we have here this morning. We sit here with our hands raised saying, God, we're ready to receive what you have to give us and what you have to teach us. We help us not to miss the words that come from this platform, not because they're from me, but God, because hopefully they come from you and your spirit. Would you just work in our hearts and lives here? In Jesus' name, amen. The verse we're going to talk about is... Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy of those who trust in him. 
And I'm going to have people come and trust and do things with me up here on stage. So I'm going to need lots of volunteers, lots of helpers. But before you pop your hand up to volunteer, make sure you're willing to trust me and make sure you're willing to obey me. Okay, so don't, don't stick your hand up unless you're willing to do those things because you never know what you might be getting yourself into. Uh, I do need someone who is trustworthy. Is there someone out here that's trustworthy? Young lady, come on up here. You're, you popped your hand up really quick. She, uh, she said she was trustworthy. And what's your name, young lady? Emily. Emily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this tube to hang on to and watch throughout my show, Okay. And you can't let anybody mess with it, but I'll trust you with that. But before you do that, you need to trust and obey me. Can you hold this little uh, dry erase marker? See how these twos don't have a loop at the bottom? Can you make a nice big number two right up in that square? Awesome. And another one right down there. Awesome. And I'm going to hand this to you and entrust you with this. Let's give it up for Emily for helping me out. You can go have a seat. Now... There is an overarching principle for what I'm going to be doing today, and this is the overarching principle. And the overarching principle is this, that God loves you, he's got a great plan for your life, and watch what he wants to do. He wants to pour out great things into your heart and life, and we want to get every last drop of those good things that God has for us. And as God pours into our life these great things, what I think he wants us to do is we get to pour into the lives of the kids that are around us. The next thing I would like to do is I'd like to get rid of the messy stuff next. How many of you would like to see me juggle raw chicken eggs? Nobody on the custodial staff has their hands up right now. Okay. Okay, including the adults, all the leaders, everybody here. How many of you have faith that I could juggle raw chicken eggs? Let's see your hand way up high if you have faith. All the adults included, way up high, because I need a volunteer. Oh my gosh, adults. <laughs> adults. Young man, come on up here, hurry. Hustle up here. What's your name? Brady. Brady. Grady. Grady. Grady, do you believe I can juggle raw chicken eggs? Yes. You have faith that I can do it, Grady? You have faith that I can do it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Grady, lay down. Now, Grady, most of the time this trick works perfect. Nine out, eight out of ten times, no trouble. I have something for you just in case. We have, uh, you can stay right there. This is for you just in case. Now, these are eggs straight from Caleb Staten's house. Now, Grady, do you believe I can juggle raw chicken eggs? Yeah. yeah. You have faith that I can do it? Yeah. I have good news and bad news. The good news is Jesus loves you and has a great plan for your life. That's good news, isn't it? <laughs> the bad news is I forgot to warm up. <laughs> Here we go. I get nervous when I do this. Here we go. Uh, more bad news I forgot how to stop. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> All right, let's give it up for him for helping me out. Can you stay up here for a second? Just, just stay up here for a second. And Grady, Grady, what I need you to do is come over here to our little marker board. And what I need you to do, trust me and obey me, I need a capital U without a tail. And then the number three. And then the number three again. Awesome. Did he trust and obey me? He did. Let's give it up for him. Hey, this is what happened. I said, how many of you want to see me juggle raw chicken eggs? All these hands went up. I said, how many of you have faith that I could juggle raw chicken? Hand, chicken? All these hands went up. And then I said, I need a volunteer. And this is what the adults did. Woo! I mean, their hands and their armpits got really, really friendly. You guys, we do the same thing with God. We say, God, I love you. I trust you. I will obey you. You want me to do what? Ooh, don't pick me. You see what Grady did? Grady gave us a picture of what it looks like to trust and obey someone. He came up here. He was willing to lay his life down. And he literally put his life on the line and let me juggle raw eggs over him. And that's a picture of what God wants us to do. I have a simple question for you. Is God good? 
I truly believe God is good. He's got a great plan for your life, and we can literally take our life and say, God, I'm laying it down and allowing you to do it with my life what you want. What is amazing is this. When we trust and obey God and lay our life down, like Grady gave us the example of, watch what God loves to do. God loves, again and again, to pour out great things into our heart and life, and we want to get every last drop of those good things that God has in store for us. Now, before we can lay our life down, before we could really trust in God, we have to understand who this guy Jesus is. And so what I have is, this is my favorite toy. This is called a giant Chinese yo-yo. And I'm going to use this yo-yo to explain how Jesus is different from everyone else who's walked on this earth. Now, there's lots of people who went back and forth on this earth claiming to be special. And throughout history, there's actually people who claim to be God. And usually when they claim to be God, they came up with rules for us to follow, hoops for us to jump through, because they said they were God and we should follow their rules. Now, some of those people who claim to be God actually said they could get us to heaven. And that usually involved us using our own strength to be good enough to get to heaven. But that's not how you get to heaven. Something happened to every one of those people who claimed to be God. They came to a point in their life when they died. And when they died, they just died. They went to a tomb. They're dead and buried. You can find them in their tomb because that's where they're going to stay. Now, Jesus also came on this earth, and Jesus went back and forth claiming to be special. In fact, he claimed to be God's only son. And the religious leaders of the day hated it so much, they took Jesus and put him on a cross and killed him. They took him down off the cross, they wrapped him up in a burial cloth, and they dropped Jesus down into a tomb. But the thing that makes Jesus so unique, so special, so different from all those other people who claim to be God, watch this. You see, the third day Jesus was in his tomb, he proved he was God by rising from the dead. Not only did Jesus rise from the dead, but he also went to heaven. And there is going to come a point when Jesus comes back from heaven, and when he does, he's going to snatch us up that fast. Those of us who know him and have a relationship with him, so we who know him can go be with him in heaven. You see, before we can lay our life down, before we can really trust in God and obey God, we have to understand how special this guy Jesus is. There's lots of people who have walked this earth that have claimed to be special, but no one did what he did. The third day he was in his tomb, he proved he was God by rising from the dead. There is going to come a day, as fast as I snatch that yo-yo out of the air, just like that, where he comes back to take us to be with him in heaven, if we've committed our heart and life to him. And I just challenge you, take advantage of this place. Come here every week expecting to hear something from God, that the words from here would just be for you. And get to know this guy, Jesus, because there's no one as special as him. Something amazing happens when we do start to recognize who this guy, Jesus, is. The more and more we realize who he is, what we see is he's amazing, and he wants to do this not just once, not just on Sundays or Wednesdays, but every day of the week, he wants to pour great things out into your heart and life because he loves you so much. Now, I need another helper, but they have to be able to use a calculator. We have a helper who can type in with a calculator. In the orange shirt in the back, come on up here, bud, really, really quick. <clears throat> And what I need from everybody else, I need everybody else to be thinking of a number between 2 and 9. Think of a number between 2 and 9. What's your name, young man? Adrian. Adrian? Adrian, what I need you to do is point to two pieces of paper. Just point to any two pieces. Okay. Now, buddy, I need you to point to one more piece of paper. That one. And so this is the one we're left with, right? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I have my phone and my calculator. I need you to trust and obey me. What we're going to do is we're, they're going to call out a number. I'm going to point to different people, and you're going to hit the number and then the time sign. The number and the time sign. That's it. So let's get right up here. Hang on to that. And I need a number between two and nine. Somebody raise your hand and yell it out. Yes, sir. Yell it out. Five. five. Push five and then times. Times. There you go. Awesome. Right here, young lady with a mask. Seven. Seven. And then seven and then times. Awesome. Back there, young man, between your parents. 
How old are you? Seven. Okay. And times. I've done this before. Yes, ma'am. Three. And then times. Awesome. In the orange shirt. Eight. And then times. In the white shirt. Four. One. Four. And times. In the very back, yell it really loud. Two. With the glasses. Young lady, yell it. Three. And the green. Nine. And one more over here, young man. And six. And then equals. At the bottom. At the bottom. Right there. Okay. Wow. And did we get a gigantic number? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of paper that you picked out. And you're going to come over here and we're going to write your number down. And what is the number that we got? Is it really big? Okay, what's the first number? Two. Two. What's the next number? One. What's the next one? Seven. 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 What's the next one? Two. Eight. Zero. Okay. Those are the... That's the number that we got. Is that right? Yep. With all those numbers? Okay. What I need you to do is set the phone down. That's not your door prize. Okay. Come over here. Trust me and obey me. I need a number two without a tail. See how this two is over here? Nice and big in that square. And then go across. There you go. And then a capital V. And then a capital M down here. Up, down, up, down. Awesome. Did he trust and obey me? He did. This is for you to take back to your chair with you. Let's give it up for him for helping me out. Hey, guys, sometimes when we trust and obey, things don't make sense. And you're probably wondering, what in the world does that have to do with anything? But even when we trust and obey God and things don't make sense, it's amazing what happens. You see, when we trust him, he loves to pour out great things into our heart and life again and again and again. I want to talk to you really quick about why we don't trust and obey God. And the number one reason that we don't trust and obey God is because we want to go our own direction. We want to do our own thing and go our own direction. And what tends to happen is we don't trust and obey God, we go the wrong direction and we get in all kinds of trouble, all kinds of messes. But I want to show you what you can do if you ever go the wrong direction. Watch this. If you ever go the wrong direction, you can always come back and do the right thing. doesn't matter if you're a boy or girl, young or old, if you go the wrong direction, you can always come back and do what's right. Now, sometimes we go the wrong direction in a big way. But even if we go the wrong direction in a big way... You can always come back and do the right thing. Doesn't matter if you're a boy or girl, young or old, if you go the wrong direction in a big way. Some of you thought you were going to get free haircuts today, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter where we go or what we've done, we can always come back and do the right thing. But sometimes we don't trust in, in God and we go our own way. And our enemy, the devil, will whisper in our ear, he'll say, you blew it. God doesn't like you anymore. Nothing could be further from the truth. Listen to this great truth. Nothing you do can separate you from the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus. Hey, guys, look at my boomerang. This is the proof of God's love right here. You see, Jesus was willing to come and stretch his arms out just like this to die on a cross for you and me. So if you ever feel like I've messed up so bad, God doesn't like me, I want you to remember that you can always, always come back to God. You can always be a boomerang. And God will always love you. And the proof of God's love is the fact that he sent his son Jesus to come and die on a cross for you. So if you ever go the wrong direction, if you ever do the wrong thing, you can always come back and do the right thing and follow after Jesus and trust him and obey him. Do you guys like the boomerangs? All right. I need two more helpers. Right here, young lady in the mask. I need a, a young guy. Let's do the other side of the room. 
Okay, young man right there on the edge, come on up here. Are you, come on up here, young lady. What's your name? Nori. Nori? Can you stand up here, Miss Nori? And what's your name? Brecken. Brecken. And you're going to stand right over here. Are you guys okay with balloons? You're not allergic to balloons, Mom or Dad? No? Okay, cool. We're going to do a balloon illustration. Now, this is another reason why we sometimes don't trust and obey God. Now, sometimes we look at other people's lives and we want what they have. Have you ever wanted what someone else has? The kids are like, I want the balloon. Yeah. Uh. So we uh, watch God work in our friend's life and we think, God, that is really cool. I wish you would do in my life what you're doing in my friend's life over there. And God molds and shapes and works in our friend's life and we think, that is what I want. I want you to do for me what you did for my friend. And we think, God, make me like them. And this is what our prayer sounds like to God. God, make me a weenie dog. I mean, that's pretty much what we're saying. Hey, God, creator of everything, let me tell you what to do. Uh, make me like them. We might as well be saying, God, make me a weenie dog. And God does special touches in our friend's life, things that only God can do, things like this. We think, wow, God, that's even better. God, make me a weenie dog. Bracken, is it Bracken? Okay, I'm going to hand this to you. Every time I point to you, you're going to lift it high in the air, okay? When he lifts it high in the air, I need everybody to say, God, make me a weenie dog. Let's practice. God, make me a weenie dog. And so God starts working in our life, and we're like, Way to, go, way to go, God. Right color for a weenie dog. That's way too much air, God, for a weenie dog. Please do something good in my life. Help me to be cool like my friend over there. And God does something that doesn't make sense. God makes us a big zero. <laughs> and God gives us freckles, our braces, our glasses, our big feet. And some of you are like, I got all four. You know, and... Uh, God, I don't want to be like this. I want to be like that. So once again, we pray. God, make me a weenie dog. And God works in our life and molds us around. And God makes us link sausage. Uh, God, wrong kind of weenie. I want it to be a weenie dog, not a weenie weenie. So once again, we pray. God, make me a weenie dog. And God moves in our lives and turns our life upside down and all around and makes us a giant knot. God, I did not want to be a knot. You're going to hang on to this knot? When I point to you, you're going to lift it high in the air and everybody's going to say, God, I don't want to be a knot. God, make me a weenie dog. And God starts working in another area of our life, and we're like, God, that's the wrong color for a weenie dog. Please do something good for me. But instead of making us a cool weenie dog like we so wanted, God does something that does not make sense. I got too much air on that one. God does something that doesn't make sense to us. He molds us, shapes us, and instead of being a cool weenie dog like we wanted, God makes us into a cross. And we're like, God, didn't want to be a cross, didn't want to be a knot, didn't want to be link sausage, didn't want to be a big zero. God, I wanted to be a cool weenie dog. And God does the special touches in our life, just like he did our friend's life. In our friend's life, it was a cool little weenie dog tail. We're now a cross with an antenna. <laughs> and some of you are here today, and you're not trusting and obeying God because you feel like your life is a knot and a cross with an antenna and everybody else's life is all together and good. And you're like, God, why would I want to follow you? I've got all these weird pieces and parts that don't seem to go together. And the Bible says this, that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And what God can do is he'll take the hardest things you have to face, even things that don't seem to make sense, things that are really even painful at times. And what God can do is this. Watch this. You see what God will do? Is God will make something beautiful out of the parts and pieces of our lives 
just like this. If you're here today and you're having trouble seeing what God has in store for you, or maybe you're going through a really difficult season and you just can't see anything good, I just want this little flower to encourage you that God sees everything, God knows everything. We can still trust and obey him even when things are hard or don't make sense, and he will bring something beautiful about as time goes on. Guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you come pick these up after the show, but I need both of you to come over to my little marker board and trust me and obey me. Come over here. I need you to do a number three right in that little square and a big zero. Awesome. And hand off to your friend over here. Young lady, what I need you to do is a capital U without a tail, nice and big, and then a straight line number one, just straight down. And can you take this side of the U all the way up to the top? Take it all the way up that way. Just keep going up, 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 up. Awesome. Did they trust and obey me? They did. Let's give it up for them for helping me out. You guys can have a seat. I need my 12 helpers up here along the edge. This is one more. I have people that are already picked. Um, and if you will just line up in front of one of the green pieces of paper. Guys, one of the main reasons that we don't trust and obey God is because... We need like four more helpers. If you want to be a helper, come up here. What you're going to do, come on up here. You're going to, I think we got all of our spots right here, baby. Okay. What we're going to do is I'm going to point to you, and when I point to you, you're going to lift the piece of paper that's on the thing just the way it is. You're going to lift it and turn around when I point to you. Hey, guys, one of the reasons we don't trust and obey God is because we don't believe that God could actually use us in his kingdom and the things that he wants to do. And I'm not sure what your excuse is, but there are lots of people that God used to do amazing things, even though they had all kinds of excuses why God shouldn't be able to use them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little list of people that had different things that caused them to say, God couldn't use me, and God still used them. So as I point to them, I'm going to say a little phrase, and then I want everybody to repeat uh, this next phrase. Can you put the, the little phrase is basically, if God can use them, then God can use me. So I'm going to say a phrase, they're going to turn around, and then you're going to say, if God can use them, then God can use me. Let's see how this works. Go ahead and turn around with that sign. David was the youngest in his whole family. Zacchaeus was so short he had to climb a tree just to see. The widow with two coins set an example, did she? Peter, James, and John, an ed- uneducated fisherman, as smelly as smelly can be. Abraham and Sarah were too old to conceive. Samson had long hair all the way down to his knee. Peter denied Jesus not one time but three. In saving God's people, Queen Esther was key. Saul sought to kill every Christian, did he? The stutterer Moses was called to set God's people free. Jonah ran from God and was tossed into the sea. Lazarus was dead, just as dead as can be. I don't know what your excuse is, but I think we got you covered. Um, you know, David was the youngest in his family, and I don't know, Zacchaeus was a little short guy, Abraham and Sarah were too old, the widow only had two little bitty coins, didn't have any money, and I don't know what you think you need to have for God to be able to use you, but whatever you think you need to have, God has you covered. And when we talk about investing in kids and and investing in the lives of these kids around us, you may think, I have nothing to do to offer them. 
But none of these people really had anything to offer either, but God in them allowed them to do amazing things. So I just encourage you, when you think you can't do the things that people ask you to do here, if God can use these people, they can use you. Hey guys, what I need you to do is everybody just turn around and put your little piece of paper right back where you got it. Let's give it up for these guys for helping me out. Hey guys, something amazing happens when we just recognize that we don't have to have a lot of ability. God can just pour out great things into our heart and life again and again and use us in spite of our weaknesses. I want to do something really fun. I had a lot of people trust and obey me, and at this time, everybody's going to get to trust and obey me. What would happen if an entire community of people trusted and obeyed God and took the love of Jesus out of the church to the community? You could see something amazing happen. What we're going to do is we're going to create a rainstorm in this room. I need you to, if you're a kid, I need you to sit on your hands. If you're an adult, you can just fold your hands like this. We're going to do the wave like a football game. We're going to start at this side and we're going to build, but instead of raising our hands, we are going to do noises with our hands. Nobody do this, but we're going to start by rubbing our hands. Okay, nobody do it. If you're rubbing your hands, fold your hands or sit on your hands. I let the kids sit on their hands because that's the best way to keep them from doing this. Parents, I try to let them do this. If you're rubbing your hands, parents, sit on your hands. Okay. We're going to rub our hands soft, sit on your hands, um, rub our hands, then we're going to rub our hands really hard, nobody do this. Hey, if you're rubbing your hands, sit on your hands. <laughs> While they're rubbing their hands, we're going to add snapping, nobody do this, nobody do this. If you can't snap yet, just little baby claps, okay? We're going to snap, then we're going to add this, nobody do it. Don't do it, don't do it. We're going to add clicking, then we're going to add slapping our thighs, then we're going to add stomping our feet. The storm is going to build up. Then we're going to stop stomping our feet. We're going to stop slapping our thighs, go back to clicking and snapping, then just snapping, then rubbing our hands. What could happen if a group of people came together as a group, trusting and obeying God? What kind of impact, what kind of amazing things could they do? Okay, everybody now get your hands like this. Really, really quiet. Nobody say anything, just listen. Listen and see if you can hear a rainstorm. You guys hear the rainstorm? <laughs> hey guys, God can do amazing things when we come together, work together, and trust and obey Him. I have two final things I want to show you that are just encouragement to trust and obey God. Where's my person with the tube? Young lady, can you come up here? And where's my friend with a piece of paper that you picked up there? Can you bring that up here? Bring that up here, buddy. Now, you didn't let anybody mess with that while I was doing my show. You sure? Okay. Hustle up here, buddy. Now, what I want you to do is hold this by the top corners, okay? Now, that's the number you got, and that's the piece of paper you picked, right? Now, you didn't let anybody mess with this, right? What I want you to do is see what color piece of paper is inside there. Yellow. Yellow. Oh, that's interesting. Now, what we're going to do is open this up. And I want you to grab the top corner and the bottom corner. You know why we can trust and obey God? Because God knows everything. You see, even when we can't see, even when we can't see it, even when we can't see the end result, God knows what's going on. 
Even in the midst of COVID and in, even in the midst of all the things that you might be going through right now, God still knows what's going on. And we can still trust and obey him because he knows it all. He sees it all. And he has our best interest at heart. Let's give it up for these two for helping me out. You guys can have a seat. You can take that with you, buddy. You can take that with you. And here's the last thing, guys. When we trust and obey God, this is the end result every single time. I had kids come up here. They trusted me. They just scribbled stuff up on this board. But when we trust and obey God, this is the end result every single time. We learn again and again that Jesus loves me. You see, he loves you so much he was willing to send his son Jesus. We can lay our life down and trust him. If we go the wrong direction, we can always come back to him no matter where you've gone, no matter what you've done. He'll always love you. There's no excuse to say that you can't be used by God because he can use anybody, including this whole list of people that we just went through. And you see what he wants to do is not just one time at an altar, not just on Sundays or Wednesdays, but every single day of your life, he loves you so much, he just wants to pour out great things into our heart and life as we trust him and obey him. And you may think, hey, I was there Sunday, I was there last Sunday, I got all thing I need, everything I need. And God would say, no, you know, if you come next Sunday, guess what? I got more words from this platform that are for you to transform your life into the best life there possibly could be. And he wants to just pour even more great things. And you may think, what about next Sunday after that? Guess what? He never runs out of good things that he wants to pour out into your heart and life. Would you guys do this for me? Would you sit up nice and straight? <clears throat> Would you put your hands up like this? Now, as we started, we did this as a posture of receiving from God. And as we close, could we just use this as a posture of offering ourselves up to God? So would you pray with me? Father, there's so much that you want to do in and through our lives. You have such a great plan for us. You love us so much, and there's nothing better than you. Would you help us to trust and obey you and to literally offer our life up, to lay our life down in following you? We pray that you would help us to come here every Sunday and know that the words from this platform are for us individually, not for someone else. And would you help us, Father, to trust and obey you and to remember that we have the ability to be used by you to make an impact in the lives of the kids that are here. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, I, I am so glad, so glad you moved in next door 30 years ago. <laughs> hey, haven't the kids been good? Um, we want to pour into their lives. Um, the truth is, when we say investing in the life of a child, as a church, we need, we need more men, we need more adults, we need more people that will pour into these kids' lives. And if you want to do that through our church, can you come talk to me? I, I, we really do need this, and that investment pays off for eternity. So I pray, let's stand for our benediction. I, I pray today that God would fill you and fill you and fill you. When you feel like you're so empty, I pray that God would pour out more and more upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.